Senator Marco Rubio. Senator, welcome back. Good to Thank see you, you again. You take it easy on me. I'm rusty. <laughs> I'll weeks. see what I can do. And I know you just got back from a trip to, to Qatar, Iraq, and Turkey, and I have a lot of questions I want to about that. Yeah. But first, there are a lot of questions about the Republican Party and where it goes from here. And, and first and foremost, there's this claim from the Trump campaign that advisors of yours have been pitching you hard to the Trump campaign to be his running mate, that you really want the job, according to these Trump campaign officials talking about these advisors. What's your position on that? Well, it would be impossible because I don't really have very many advisors around. Our campaign is no longer running. And unless they've been talking to my wife, which is my critical advisor these Does days. Does she want you to be no. Mr. Trump? I, like I said yesterday, look, I think Donald has won. The, he's won the, he's the presumptive nominee at this point. And, uh, but he, he'd be best served by having someone, not just by the way a vice presidential nominee, but active surrogates who agree with him on his issues. My differences with Donald, both my reservations about his campaign and my policy differences with him are well documented and they remain. And I think he would be best served by having people close to him and his campaign that are enthusiastic about the things he stands for. You have raised concerns throughout the campaign, ones that you're standing by about his temperament and about his views on foreign policy, on trade policy and other things. Would those reservations keep you, do they right now preclude you from endorsing him? Well, I've set out, I've signed a pledge that said I'd support the Republican nominee, and I intend to continue to do that. But we're, look, here's a situation that we're in. On the one hand, uh, the Demo I don't want Hillary Clinton to be the president of the United States. I, I don't want her to win this election. On the other hand, as I said, I have well-defined differences with the current, the, the presumptive nominee of the Republican Party. And like millions of Republicans, we try to reconcile those two things. I intend to live up to the pledge that we made. But that said, it, it, I, these uh, concerns that I have about policy, they remain and they're there. But, you know, I, I, uh, that doesn't mean that uh, Donald needs to change his positions in order to get my support or what have you. As I said earlier today, I think he should be true to what he believes in and continue to campaign on those things and, and make his case to the American people. But it's not just uh, concerns that you've had about him. You once said uh, that you didn't think it was, that you had concerns about the fact, about the, about the nuclear codes being in the hands of an erratic con man. That was what you said. Well, so, so, so I'm not going to, here's what I'm not going to do over the next six months is sit there and just be taking shots at him. He obviously wasn't my first choice because I was running for president. He has won the nomination. And now he deserves the opportunity to go out and make his case to the American people. And, and that's what he's going to do. I don't view my role over the next six months to just sit here and level charges against him. I know what I said during the campaign. I enunciated those things repeatedly. And uh, voters chose a different direction. I stand by what I, the things that I said, but I'm not going to sit here now and become his chief critic over the next six months because he deserves the opportunity to go forward and make his argument and try to win. But do you understand why millions of people who voted for you and who still see you as the future of the Republican Party wonder, well, if you're standing by saying that you have concern about putting the, your, the nuclear codes in the hands of an erratic con man, how do you because reconcile we all, that? Well, with we ultimately live in a republic. And so in a republic, these voters went out and voted. And through the process set up by the Republican Party, he became our nominee. That's just a fact. He is now the presumptive nominee. That said, it doesn't change what I've said in the past. I stand by those things. And, uh, but, but now he is the presumptive nominee. I don't want Hillary Clinton to win. And I just don't view now the most productive role for me is to be sitting here and be someone that's taking shots at him. Do you want day. either one of them to win? Well, I don't want Hillary Clinton to win. And as I've said, I want to be supportive of the Republican nominee. I signed a pledge that I would do so. And I think one of the best ways that I can be supportive of the conservative cause is to go out there and work on behalf of those who, for example, are, are running to hold the Republican.